Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another one third scale J&D statue review. Today we're looking at Mira based off her appearance in the first Aquaman film. Oh this is gonna be an interesting one. Now I got mine from toyswonderland.com, link for that is in the description below, they have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new statue review goes live on the channel. Okay, let's do it, let's address it, I know what y'all are thinking. You wanna talk about the bee and the trial and Amber Heard and all the stuff that she's accused of. I don't want to do any of that, I just want to talk about Mira and her performance and Aquaman the movie. I really enjoyed the character of Mira and the film that she appeared in. I'm hoping that everyone watching is mature enough just to look at the art here. There were some crazy talented sculptors involved, painters, artists, hair rooting people. They killed it with this statue. Quite frankly, I am enamored with this piece. So like I said, I'm hoping that we can just look at the art here and forget all of the other stuff. If you can't, then okay, go for your life, say the goofy comments in the comment section down below, I'll read them, I'll reply to them. Still, it's not exactly what I think we should all spend our time doing, especially not when it comes to collectibles based off DC characters. I'm not buying an Amber Heard statue, I'm buying a Mira statue at the end of the day. And what a Mira statue this is, I, like I said, am really impressed with this statue. The reason why I got her, even though there is controversy, is I like this character and I really wanted to add her to my growing one-third scale J&D collection. The display base is nice and consistent with the rest of J&D's lineup. It's this black, multi-tiered display base with the Aquaman logo around the front, and they've given it this almost crown molding feel. It comes across very premium. It almost feels like a statue base that you'd see on some kind of high-end marble bust or something. They are getting more glossy each time I review a J&D statue. If you go back and look at the Arthur Fleck, then the Harley Quinn, and even the Dark Knight Batman, they start to get very, very glossy until we get to this one where it's just pure shine and it looks gorgeous. It is a fingerprint magnet, a smudge magnet, and a dust magnet, however, so when you get this, just dust it off. Maybe use some Novus anti-static spray, just spray it on the surface, give it a wipe down. And that should prevent dust from clinging to it, at least for a little while. The top of the display base, in my opinion, is a little bit boring. I get why they scale down on the saturation here, because Mira herself is very, very colourful. And that just helps draw your attention away from the display base, so that you're focusing on the statue herself. For me, I like my bases to be a little bit more interesting, so this wet Resin look is beautiful, no question, very realistic, it literally looks like water on a muddy surface. Just not what I was hoping for. That brown, I would have preferred if it was more of a slate grey, so it looks like rock rather than mud. Working our way up her boot, the textures here are crazy. This outfit is fully sculpted by the way, none of this is fabric, so all of the wrinkles, all of the stitching, the zippers, the folds, the creases, that's all sculpted in, and artists literally had to sit down and think about where the sculpts of those creases would actually be. Behind her knees, in front of the knees, working your way down the ankle. It's all there, it does convincingly look like she's wearing a fabric bodysuit and a pair of high heeled boots. Speaking of the high heels, they're pretty chonky and they're quite thin. She does insert into the display base with this very secure metal pin and there's a magnet on the other side to keep her in place. So it's not like she can get out of alignment, she's supposed to be in the spot that she's in. Pretty simple. She also has an optional crown which we'll discuss in just a second. It's optional because you can remove it and for me, I like to just leave it on the display base when I'm not using it, just for some added set dressing. Totally up to you though, if you want to have her wearing the crown rather than having it on the display base, keeping that completely devoid of any accoutrement, totally fine, keep it simple. I am very curious to see what it looks like on her, and we'll try that out a little bit later. The pose, I love. It's very sassy with hip popped, and having the hands out to her side as though she's about to use her water casting power. Yeah, definitely the right call. It conveys that she has an ability, and we see her doing that pose in the movie where she has her hands out, using her ability to move water around. And it also adds a bit of personality back in. It makes her look sassy. It makes her look powerful. And I'm all about that for Mira. She was a 
badass in the film. Now her hands are actually silicon to my surprise. I didn't know if they were going to be, but oh they are. They're very squishy, the fingers are kind of movable. They're not poseable though, there aren't any wires in here, so they are pre-posed. It's already baked into the silicon. But the detail is crazy. Even the fingernails are a little bit shiny, so they look like real fingernails. The only thing that I kind of question here is... Why is her skin tone so saturated? They've almost dialed up the saturation of the skin tone to 11. It looks good in context to the green outfit because that offsets the brighter colour to the skin tone. But in isolation when you zoom in, and in some pictures, it can look a little bit on the red side, just depending on lighting. Her hands are also inserted into the gauntlets, so there is a natural shadow cast over the seam where the hand connects to the gauntlets. So it does look like she's actually wearing an outfit. It's not like it's one sculpt and it's just been painted to look that way. There are wrinkles at the hips and in the elbow area, so that once again makes it look like she's wearing a fabric suit. All of the stitching is very nicely painted, and the pops of gold with that Aquaman-style belt logo and on the gauntlets, it does help break up the green a little bit, because if they weren't there, then the outfit would look a little bit plain and boring. Then again, going with this almost mesh pattern in some of the honeycomb parts of the suit, not just all smooth, and using at least three or four different shades of green, with metallics and pearlescence over the top, maybe she was never in danger of looking boring in the first place. We haven't even gotten to the best part yet, at least in my opinion, it's gotta be the head sculpt. It's very impressive. Is it perfect? No. Is it their best head sculpt yet? Also, no, I still give that to their Golden Armor Wand Woman, I think that is literally a 10 out of 10 Grail piece, at least it is in my collection, but it's very strong. From most angles, I can see the mirror likeness. Some people might not like that, they would prefer it to look less like the actress who portrays Mira, and that's fine. You can move it to one of the off angles, perhaps. If I did have to rank her, though, I would put this head sculpt above Catwoman and just above Harley Quinn. Now her hair is real hair, so that means you might have to do a little bit of styling out the box. Luckily mine I was very happy with, the ringlets are all predefined. And you can mess around with the hairstyle if you'd like to bring some of the curls around the front, you totally can. I personally prefer it tucked over the shoulder, just the way I like to do it. Now her head sculpt is all silicon, so it's very squishy. And I don't recommend touching anything without gloves on, especially these teeny tiny little very fine real hair eyebrows. She's got proper dentures inside her mouth, you can see it's slightly parted. And she's got glass eyes, so she looks very realistic. Now the crown is beautifully textured, very well painted, it looks like metal, there's this patina wash on it and this big spike up on top. And you see that pin down the bottom? That's actually how you install it into the head sculpt. At first, I was nervous because this pin plugging into that head sculpt, it is silicon, so I get what they were going for. You literally just spike it in and it secures it in place. It is very, very secure, and don't worry, you can push down on it pretty firmly. The head sculpt is silicon, so it's just gonna bounce right back. I don't think you can do any damage to this head sculpt by pushing that crown on. You can also adjust the hair. I like to have one strand coming down the front with the crown on, just to add some visual interest and some asymmetry in. And also, I like to have the sides of the crown poking through the hairline. Just more dynamic that way, and more believable too. If you pop a crown on and you have long hair, it would go in and around the crown. Rather than just looking like a piece of plastic you've stabbed onto a head sculpt. The hair itself is full of life and full of flow and personality. There's ringlets, there's curls, and to save from it looking like a cheap and nasty red wig, they've added a couple of darker strands of hair in there so it looks more believable and natural. Okay, now I'm just repeating myself. Moving on for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, another one of my favourite J&D statues, it's Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad. While these two didn't cross paths in the normal DCEU, Who's to say they didn't in the Nightmare timeline? Maybe that happened, maybe not. Harley Quinn is a little bit shorter than Mira, especially when she has her crown on. It gives her a little bit of an added height boost. I know probably most people won't pair Mira with Harley. They'll want an Aquaman, and the Prime 1 version is kind of the only one to go for right now in third scale in the matching outfit from the Solo movie. Still... I'm going to pair Mira alongside Golden Armor, Wonder Woman, and Harley Quinn, and then have Catwoman, then Batman. You know how it goes. I'm going to mix and match for my DC collection. So at the end of this, do I like this statue? 
Oh, hell yes, I do. I think this is a home run. Is it their best yet? No, it is close. It's just a little bit too simple, I understand, for some collectors. And too controversial for others. That's also something to be aware of. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in for and a loyalty program. I also have to say a massive thank you to my buddy Sofa Lamb for coming over and helping me film this awesome statue. I have put the link to his channel in the description below. Seriously, go check out his stuff. He makes some badass videos. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.